is an updated review on the G3 Sportsman 200. I've had this boat for a, uh, a little over a year now. And uh, last time I had done a review back in September, I think. <clears throat> and uh, since then, quite a lot's changed. Um, I figured I would give a, uh, an updated review uh, on the boat and show everything that I've done to it so far. Uh, I'm gonna start up here in the front. Um, just kind of work my way from front to back, left to right. The these uh, lights right here, these are black oak LEDs. Um, I've been using these since I think summer of last year. Uh, I hadn't had any problems out of them. I've got one on each side of the boat, and they're pumping out about 4,000 lumens a piece. And I've uh, I've avoided a lot of a lot of stuff in the water with them things. Um, I would highly recommend them uh, to anyone wanting some uh, lights to run down the river at night time. Uh, the fish finder right here. <clears throat> this was actually given to me by my good friend Trevor and, and my tournament partner and your co-host of uh, Backwoods Catfishing. I don't get to use it a whole lot, but uh, when I do, it really comes in handy for uh, catching bait that's deep and really having to target those uh, those bait balls. But uh, it's working pretty good. I've got it. I've got it linked to the the Tarova that you see right here. This Tarova is a 80-pound Bluetooth. It's plenty enough to hold this boat in current, uh, probably to three and a half to four miles an hour. There are times that I wish I would have got the, the 112 instead of the 80 pound, but uh, I'd say about 90% of the time that uh, I'm completely happy with it. Uh, the spot lock uh, works amazing on this uh, trolling motor. They definitely uh, amped it up from the, the previous generation of Tarova uh, with this one being the Bluetooth model. Uh, this one is a link, uh, so I do have it linked uh, to my Helix 10 Mega on the front dash. I'll get to that uh, when I get to the consoles. <coughs> but uh, I can't really say anything else about it. It's, uh, it's performed to expectation. Uh, sometimes I do wish I would also got the, the longer length shaft because I've had this boat in some extremely rough water enough to where the entire trolling motor is coming out of the water if we're trying to drag baits uh, but i think that's only happened two or three times so uh this is a 60 inch shaft on this trolling motor and besides those you know two or three times this, this thing has, has been flawless for me no issues at all um let's walk over here to the other side This is your uh, your puck that comes with the, the trolling motor uh, when you purchase it. This isn't used for spot lock or or e really anything dealing with um, navigation purposes. <clears throat> this is just a, a jog sensor, and uh, the only thing the jog sensor is used for is if you're spot locked and you want to move five foot left or or to the right or backwards or forwards. This, uh, this little sensor lets that happen. Uh, this is just an antenna for my radio. Uh, it come with a little wire antenna, but uh, it sucked, so I trashed it and bought this one. <coughs> we'll get to that. I'm still running these uh, blue water LEDs in the boat that you saw in the last video. Um, still no issues out of these lights. Get a side shot of this boat real quick. Alright, as we're up here at the consoles, I'm sure you can hear the radio. Let me turn this down. Uh, that radio is a, a Boss a Marine radio. Uh, I bought it off Amazon. It come with the, the head unit. And there's a speaker under there. And there's another speaker over there. It was pretty easy to put in. 
Uh, it just took me a couple hours to cutting uh, holes and running wires. Uh, it's a Bluetooth radio, so I can hook it up to my phone, uh, not have any extra wires hanging around. <coughs> uh, the trolling motor, I'm sorry, not the trolling motor, but the uh, main head unit here, <coughs> like I said, it's a Hummingbird Helix 10, and uh, it's a Mega. I really don't use the, the Mega feature a whole lot. Uh, I feel like I can see fish better uh, with the, I think it's the 800 kilohertz. Uh, frequency uh, on side imaging now I will use mega imaging on uh, down imaging 90% uh, of the time because if I'm running down imaging uh, I'm looking at structure and I'm trying to see fish inside a structure and that higher frequency really picks apart the tree and shows the, uh, the fish sitting inside the tree a lot better to me but if I'm running side, side imaging on uh, a flat or on the bottom of channel edge I'm running 800 kilohertz most of the time sometimes I will have to bump uh, that frequency to 455 if I have a really soft bottom uh, that soft bottom it, it absorbs frequencies a lot easier and uh, the higher the frequency you have the easier it is for the uh, mud to absorb the, the, the frequency sound so in a really soft bottom you gotta you gotta bump that on down <coughs> uh, this is the remote right here that comes with the uh, trolling motor and it says motor not found because it's not turned on but uh, you have a few options uh, like I said this is the link model so it's hooked into my fish finder um, I can follow the contour uh, with this uh, which I've done in the past and have had really good success catching uh, blue cats and flatheads um, but other than that I really don't use follow the contour that much uh, except for that if I'm dragging baits most of the time I, I'm not following just a single contour I'm, I'm crossing several different ones so I'll use the auto north uh, feature uh, which is basically you point it in the direction you want it to go and it'll keep you in that direction regardless of current or wind So that's the main feature I use for that uh, I'm still <clears throat> using the factory seats eventually. I would like to get some uh, some hydraulic seat pedestals uh, for rougher rods um, They would really save save the hurt on the back and uh, There's times I would have killed to have one but for right now, uh, they're just so expensive. I can't justify buying one for that once or twice a year that I really wish I had one. So for right now, I'm gonna keep rocking these. Um, this Bimini top, <coughs> I can't remember offhand where I purchased it. Uh, it was fairly expensive. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description uh, once I find, uh, find it in my emails where it come from. But I want to say it was four hundred and four hundred and fifty dollars, and it's like three hundred dollars more than the eBay uh, tops you can buy. But the reason I bought this one is I had this high speed rating that I could find in a Bimini top, which is fifty miles an hour, and it had the longest warranty that I could find at uh, eight years. So this Bimini top is still going to be under warranty by the time I pay this boat off and anything with a lifetime warranty or extended warranties always pulls me before something cheaper will i just like for everything to hold up over time and we're real abusive on these boats in rough water so it's really nice having that extra protection uh, for your gear um, <clears throat> these pole holders these are just some stainless uh, uh, fishing pole holders uh, that I had bought from uh, Academy Sports here in town. The brand is Fish On. Uh, I haven't had a problem with uh, the two uh, that are on the left and the right, but I just had to move the one in the center because it's designed a little differently as far as how it mounts. And um, the little brackets on the back of it uh, eventually snapped off. And uh, there was four brackets on it, <coughs> and the two on the outside had, had broke off. So uh, I had to change up the way I mounted it. 
Um, I don't know which which style is newer. I'm assuming this one because it, it 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 just flows better and it's got a better mount mounting design. So I'm sure they wouldn't have uh, went basically back in time to a worse design. But you never know. Um, other than that, they, they've been working pretty good. And the reasons I didn't buy the plastic ones are for the same reasons that I'm talking about uh, the durability of my gear with this being stainless steel. Uh, it was justifiable in the, in the cost extra for uh, to mount these in the boat versus the plastic ones. Um, these are 10-inch Driftmaster Pro Duos. Let's you uh, suspend or anchor and what I mean by suspend, you can either spot lock and suspend straight down or you can drift and anchor and you can either cast poles out in the anchor position at a, you know, between a 30 and a 45 degree or you can drag baits from them. <coughs> I've moved these lights. These were originally um, inside the track system right here. But they didn't put off enough light to the rods right there so I had moved them to the outside of the boat now they put off plenty of light on the on these two poles right here out of line rod racks uh, I've been using these for a couple months now and I don't know how I ever got by without uh without these things uh, these things are a back saver originally I had had these rod holders mounted uh, to this flat surface right here and I was having to bend down uh, probably an extra 10 inches uh, to reel down on a fish. And you really don't notice uh, the difference until you get these on here. And uh, I'm 6'8", so it's it's really really nice not having to bend down that extra, you know, nearly a, a foot to get a rod. And, and if you have a big fish on, it's, uh, you know, it's, it can be even harder to get that pole out. Um, so I'm really, really happy with these. They performed uh, above my expectations. Um, I had made these bases to go up here for this rack on the CNC machine. Uh, these are also blue water lights. These are uh, all these lights are blue in color. Um, just in case I forgot to mention that. Uh, the rod holders, these are also uh, Driftmaster Pro Duos, but these are the, the 4 inch stems instead of the 10 inch stems. <coughs> oh, and by the way, this uh, this episode is sponsored by Miller Lot. So, on a hot summer day, make sure you got your cold one. This boat has uh, the Yamaha 200 on it. It'll push this boat about about 50 miles an hour by myself. I've got a lot of weight in this thing. <clears throat> and uh, I hear some people getting 53, 54 with the factory prop, which is what I'm still using. Uh, now I, I have tested pr uh, other props to go on this boat to try to increase that speed. And the only one that's, uh, that I found to increase the speed is the uh, the Yamaha Reliance, uh, I think it's a 13 and 3 quarter diameter by 19 pitch, which is the factory prop that comes on the Yamaha 150 motors for this exact same boat. Uh, but that's a $500 prop, so it's hard to justify $500 for an extra two miles an hour. <clears throat> uh, I'm using the survivors back here. I've been using. Uh, these units for well over a year now and they've uh they've exceeded my expectations they really really help keep those fish alive especially in the warmer months of the year when i'm uh when i'm making long runs more than <coughs> 20 30 minutes at a time um uh, they keep fresh water pumped in the my live well i got a little little glue setting up over here uh, some of this uh, adhesive had had worked loose from the back of a uh, the strip so uh, I got some gorilla glue setting up on this thing right now I'm trying to keep it held down in, in place with tape until it dries 
Um, I've had a lot of people uh, send me messages on Facebook about my uh, my bait tray, and I really didn't think it was going to be that big of a hit, but I get at least two or three people uh, a week message me about this thing um, and how I've got it set up. You know, I can take it off uh, off the boat and wash it in the river when I'm done with it and just slide it back in the seat pedestal. And uh, it doesn't come this way. You can't buy it like this. Uh, you can only buy the board. You'll just have to buy you a seat pedestal and uh, a bracket that fits your boat to mount this thing to. But I'll put the, the bait board in the description also. It come off of Amazon as well. There's the other speaker that I was referring to earlier. Um, since my last review, I've added some some more batteries to this boat. So mess in here right now. But in here, I've got a uh, we've got two 36 inch drift socks, uh, a three bank power charger, a 35 pound anchor just in case I want to uh, double anchor if I don't have any current and four batteries, four big uh, marine deep cycle batteries. Uh, those two you see right there, I had to tie those together uh, to basically double my, my capacity for uh, the boat. That That's, that's the main cranking uh, battery and it also powers every electrical component in this boat except for the Chola motor. And one battery, I was getting about one trip out of. And I needed it to last longer than that, so I had tied two of them together. Um, and now I, I could take two trips uh, in this boat before having to charge batteries. And that's powering the radio, the fish finder, LED lights, powering everything. So I'm pretty happy with that. And here, I just got done washing the boat, so you see water everywhere. Got a couple scales. I ordered a couple of these extra plugs uh, for the live well. Uh, I use those to uh, block off the overflows if I'm trailering fish. Uh, keeps all my water in my live well. Uh, if you're interested in that, uh, send me a, a message on Facebook and I can send you a link uh, to where I bought those. I know not many people need these because they don't trailer fish in tournaments. But if you do, just send me a message. And uh, I'll be more than happy to help out. This is everything up here. This is all factory right here. These cords are just used to uh, power my GoPros while uh, while I'm fishing. Uh, I added this uh, 12 volt outlet right here to have constant power to. Uh, the other camera on the passenger side of the boat and it's got a watertight seal on it keep water out of there in here i've got uh, some planter boards some dragon uh weights some bait tackle box some life jackets and this is a 10 foot easterland drift sock um, me and Trevor use this whenever we're uh, dragging baits on, on rough water. And uh, and 36 inch socks just don't just don't cut the cut it. They uh, they don't let you slow down enough to, to drag baits. And here uh, I have just uh, this is my main anchor. It's a 30 pound uh, homemade anchor made by one of my buddies. And I've used it for about a year now, and uh, it's, it's been working good for me. And you all know I hate this minnow bucket. Uh, so the only thing I use in this thing is just cast net storage. I've got a five foot net and a six foot net in there. Uh, the six foot net is a five eighths mesh. So it filters out all the smaller bait and only keeps the bait uh, that I want. But uh, I think that's about it. If you've got any questions on uh, on anything that I may have missed or uh, 
this is any questions in general about the boat uh, feel free to send me a message on Facebook uh, you can contact my personal page at Josh Brown or uh, the Backwoods uh, Catfishing Facebook page and uh, me or Trevor can can definitely help you out with anything um, since I got down here I, I remembered one thing <clears throat> this trailer that this boat is sitting on I don't think there's a, a worse trailer that's ever been made for a boat from my understanding uh, a company called Bear makes these trailers and this is the absolute worst piece of garbage I've ever seen in my life for a boat that's just over a year and a half old uh, so far I've had three welds break I've had that hub go out on me you said the different color hub versus that one I've had to relocate uh, my spare tire because my spare tire bracket, which was mounted right here in the center, kept snapping. And the winch, this winch is starting to seize up. So it's going to have to be replaced pretty soon. And I mean, for a boat to be a year and a half old, that's, that's just ridiculous uh, to have to do all that. Um, if you have the option, don't get the trailer. Uh, that's factory request another one if it like I said if you have that option to while I'm thinking about it I want to show you all this nifty little design here it's gonna be a game changer for the way I fish so this is a, uh, a 12 foot uh, painters pole and it retracts down to four foot when you're not using it I'm sure you're looking at this going, what the hell is this? Well, I'm about to show you. Pretty cool design. So I've made this. This painter's pole. Uh, I took an end off of a front navigation light. And I made a custom bushing to go inside this sleeve. And uh, I drill and glued all this together. So I can, I can make this painter's pole and I can set it right down in here inside my navigation uh, port and I've already tested it and this thing works uh, I'm getting power to to this navigation light here and I've kept this one uh, just in case you know I don't want to film or, or or anything else just if I ever want to run the little one at night time but there's a wire that runs all the way to the top of this thing and I've got a, uh, an LED pod light and an adapter to screw on the threads. And it's gonna be powered now. So that's my new light uh, for nighttime filming and fishing. So it should be, uh, it should be a really good uh, setup after I get this uh, uh, electrical job done to it. But uh, I'm excited to get it done and, and really get some not filming in last year it really pissed me off because uh most of my fish seemed like that they would come at night time and uh i never caught them on camera uh i tried using a cell phone with a uh, flashlight but no it just it wasn't gonna cut it so i'm really hoping uh this pole does the trick so i'm thinking it will and like I said, it's retractable to four foot. So if I want to store it, I'm just going to put it right up under these uh, rod holders on some uh, clips just to keep it out of the way and keep it handy when I need it. So that's it. That's the new uh, the new review of the Sportsman after I've had it uh, a year. Other than that, this boat, you know, it handles rough water fantastic. And um, it does all right on gas. Uh, but anything you go full throttle in, it's gonna it's gonna guzzle that gas down. So I try to keep it around around 4,500 RPM if I'm just fun fishing or cruising. But you can bet your ass on takeoff on tournament days, I'm I'm wide open as fast as I can go. So hope y'all enjoyed. Uh, leave a thumbs up, uh, comment below if you got any questions, 
and uh, subscribe to the Backwoods Catfishing page. We're gonna have a lot of new stuff coming to you. Trevor just uh, just purchased a drone for us, so uh, we're gonna have some some sick shots coming in. And, uh, it's gonna be a, a really good summer and good fall coming up. I got a I got a good feeling about it. I'm taking my wife to uh, to Wheeler this weekend for an overnight trip. So I'm hoping to bust her new personal best and the and a new uh, boat record. And the boat record is 62 pounds, and her personal best is 35. So I'm hoping we can shatter both of those while we're there. And I wouldn't mind catching a big fish myself. So we'll see what happens, and uh, stay tuned. And like I said, go to our uh, our Facebook page, Backwoods Catfishing, and uh, like the page. Uh, send me a message if you got any questions. Y'all have a good day. He can't even bait a hook. He can't even skin a bug.